Dandy can be best summed up as gauntlet for when you're bored of playing gauntlet. There's no shame in it, but there's also no real denying it. Gauntlet was released in arcades back in 1985 to huge success, and Dandy waddled onto computers in 1986. Oh, but hold on. Dandy was first released on the Atari in 1983. That's two years prior to Gauntlet. How did it manage to copy Gauntlet so well if it came out before it? Some say time travel, others say that Gauntlet was actually inspired by Dandy, but I honestly think that the creators of Dandy simply knew that Gauntlet would eventually exist and so decided to get it done first. That makes the most sense. In all seriousness though, the connection between the two games is pretty easy to spot. A depleting health bar, food increases your health, keys open doors. The original Atari version also had a four-player game mode, sadly omitted from the Spectrum release, but the building blocks were there all the same. The dandy conversion for the Spectrum also beat out the gauntlet conversion by a solid year, so dandy truly was the daddy of starving to death in a dungeon. It's strange how time has treated the game, considering its heritage, but throw the name around now and most people won't have a clue what you're talking about. That's a shame, really, because dandy is alright. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's a-okay. Look, if I sound a bit middle of the road on this, it's because I'm very angry with the game at the minute. I still can't look it in the eye, and here I am having to say nice things about it. We'll get to the source of my derision, but first, let's talk about that name. Dandy. Have you got it yet? Do you know why it's called Dandy? I'll give you a minute. D and D. Dandy. Clever, innit? The Spectrum version of Dandy features two characters. We have Thor, who's our player one, seen here looking like a medieval executioner and nothing like Thor. And we have Sheba. She's the player two character, but seeing as I'm sat here on my own, I have no idea what she looks like. I'm sure she looks great. The instructions for the game are relatively short. Hack, thrash, and pillage your way to oblivion in 15 dungeons that descend into the heat and darkness of men's souls. The heat and darkness of our souls. You getting that? Sheba, raw onions and knackwurst, 240 pounds of screaming bloodlust. I, I have practically no idea what this line means. Thor, one Norwegian mother you don't want to mess with. Alone or together, the challenge remains the same. Grab the treasure and trash the droves of nasties that are bent hellways to trash you. Keep your energy up with any snacks you find, and you may even come out alive. If you do, and all the treasure has been collected, you'll be presented with a clue at the end of each set of dungeons. Collect the clues from all three dungeon loads, dungeon loads, and solve the riddle. So, you get these clues if you manage to collect all the treasure on the way to the end of the dungeon. I've completed two of the three dungeons available, and let me tell you a little something about these riddles. I haven't gotten any of them. Yeah, and every single bit of treasure in a dungeon is basically expert mode for this game, and I am by no means an expert. On the face of it though, Dandy isn't a particularly difficult game at all. You're given a very generous dollop of energy, consistent food drops to increase that energy, the ability to trade treasures for more energy, and the enemies are, well, mostly dormant. You might look at a screen like this and think, Jiminy Cricket, that's a lot of enemies. And you'd be right, but look at how many are actually moving. At any given time, there'll be a maximum of five that are actually doing anything, and the rest will just lie dormant until you've offed some of the more active ones. Enemies come in three types. Vampire-headed pain in the arse, weird soldier-type orc man monster, and gross, gross spider faces. I don't know what it is about these guys, but they seriously creep me out. I'm not even scared of spiders, I just don't like swarms of things. And even though most of them won't be moving, I don't know. Just the idea of having to wade past 20 plus of these creepy looking monstrosities sends shivers up my spine. Thankfully, Thor is able to attack creatures using... Well, it's it's not his hammer. I think he's just throwing rocks at them. Regardless, it works, and both movement and attacking is a relatively straightforward affair. 
Spiders take one shot, everything else takes a random number of shots I wasn't able to count. But it generally means that combat is fairly swift and simple to get into. That's if you really bother with it. The longer you play Dandy, the more you'll realise that standing and fighting everything in a room is often a bit of a fool's game. You've more chance of getting hit, you don't really get anything for it, and so long as you leave the active creatures well alone, you can shoot a path through the dormant enemies to get to where you're going relatively easily. Now, I didn't realise until the very end of my playthrough that you can actually destroy the enemy spawners in a room, because it only works if you've destroyed every single enemy on the screen. If you don't do this, leaving the screen and re-entering means that all the enemies are back where they were. This can lead to some pretty frustrating moments where you accidentally move to a new screen, come back, and then you have to fight everything from scratch again. It's generally only a minor inconvenience though, and I got through 95% of the game without destroying a single spawner. If you're playing the game correctly, you'll hopefully be moving consistently forward and you won't need to backtrack too much. There is one issue with the flick screen mechanic that Dandy employs, however. You're never sure what you're walking into, and a good 75% of the time, you'll end up stood right in the middle of a massive pile of spiders. The game seems to revel in doing this to you. Most levels, in fact, start with you having to frantically work out where you are because it's dumped you right in the centre of a screen full of enemies. I'm genuinely not sure why anyone thought this was a good idea. It's unfair and frustrating, but as mentioned, you're given an abundance of opportunities to replenish health so it sort of balances itself out. There are four pickups here to help you out overall. Treasure, food, keys and power-ups. Treasure can be kept as a health pack of sorts. Hitting the R key will trade it for energy whenever you need it, I'm not sure how that works. Food just gives you an energy boost straight away, keys are used for unlocking doors, and they're also the single most important aspect of Thor's life, and power-ups are... weird. When you have a power-up, you can press space to use it. When I first pressed spacebar, all the enemies were wiped off the screen. Awesome, I thought, that's just what I need. The next time I went to use one, it didn't appear to do anything. I pressed it three, four, five times, and eventually it killed everything on the screen. On checking the instructions, the special attack is actually one of three things randomly chosen. It'll either disorient everything, paralyze everything, or kill everyone. You don't want it to do the first two things, ever. The first two are rubbish, so you basically just keep pressing spacebar until everything dies. These are pretty much all of the mechanics you're going to be dealing with throughout your time in Dandy, but there's a couple of things I've yet to cover, and they're going to make or break the game for you. These things in question relate to one of Dandy's pickups, and something of a finite resource, keys. To access any of the multitude of doors in Dandy's world, you're going to need one of these door unlockers in your inventory. There's generally enough keys in a level to get you from point A to point B, the final exit which takes you to the next level, but here's the thing. As with every other pickup in this game, you can destroy them by accident. When you're surrounded by hordes of enemies, your instinct is to typically shoot in all directions, rapidly and with complete abandon, but you can't. Not necessarily because if you do, you risk a complete soft lock of your game. Alexander Graham Bell said, when one door closes, another door opens, but we so often look so long and so regretfully upon the closed door that we do not see the ones which open for us. In the world of Dandy, this quote is absolute bollocks. When one door closes, it stays closed unless you can find a key. If you can't find a key, kill yourself and start all over again. That's the true quote here, because coming across a locked door and realising you've run out of keys just feels like such a middling end to a particularly good run. This is exactly what happened to me on my last game. I'd gotten to a level 17 and had started the level without a single key in my inventory. What do I see on the second screen of this level? A locked door. There was absolutely nothing I could do. I can't go back. I can't explore. Thor has to simply sit there until he starves to death or gets eaten by spiders. This is not a fitting way for a Norse god to perish. 
So overall, it's a fine game with a fine amount of annoyances tagging along for the ride. How do I sum up further than that? Well, here's a hypothetical question. I want to play something like Gauntlet on the Spectrum, but I don't want to play Gauntlet on the Spectrum. What game on the Spectrum should I play? That might be a very specific question, but you'd be surprised by how many answers it has. And Dandy is high on the answer list. It's certainly not glowing praise, but if you want more Gauntlet, and you don't want it to be Gauntlet, Dandy's your man.